the showcasing of Palestinian testimonies at the ICJ was one that was both moving and heartbreaking at the same time, because this is not an unfamiliar sight for Palestinians. What we saw was a presentation of testimonies by the state of South Africa, Palestinian documentation backed by human rights organizations, um, backed by international policymakers. And what we saw from the Israeli representatives at the court was again an emphasis to legitimize the mass slaughter of Palestinians, namely civilians and children, by claiming that they are targeting Hamas. This is an incredibly significant and important move despite the recognition that we might not see any tangible impact afterwards. But nonetheless, what it showcases is that people will continue mobilizing in the midst of this type of violence, in the midst of genocidal practices, in any avenue available to them. Palestinian people are unable to actually push forward at the ICJ because technically we don't have a state recognized at the United Nations. So we had to have a third party actually push forward at the International Criminal Court of Justice for stopping an ongoing genocide. And I think this is not just unprecedented, but it is a bold and brave move in a state actually owning up to its international obligations and its duty and its involvement as a global actor, the capacity to have been able to still push forward these testimonies amid a communications blackout, amid a large censorship campaign that removes Palestinian documentation of crimes happening against them, showcases that the crimes happening are so vast and so big that the state of South Africa still managed to show the violence that is happening against Palestinians. It was emblematic of the Israeli policymakers setting intent of committing genocide even before the escalation of airstrikes on Gaza. That's what also South Africa is doing. It is carving a new path by searching the avenues that are available where we can at least avoid the, the neglect and the nullification of Palestinian testimonies in the future because that's what we saw after the 1948 massacres. The Israeli narrative kept pushing forward that Palestinians fled. It kept pushing forward that they rightfully just took this land and completely negated the testimonies. And that's, that's the point, the standing, the confrontation, the insistence that we won't be quiet. Even though we're not Palestinians, we will not be quiet. As a Palestinian, I felt like a spectacle. As a journalist, I was happy to finally see these stories out. We we're fighting systems of censorship and silencing and repression. So to be able to see them out there for the world to see, that was powerful and it was heartbreaking. These are not just my people, these are people, these are humans, part of the global community. And what South Africa did is it insisted that Palestinians are treated exactly like that part of the global community. And that warrants intervention and that warrants recognition and that warrants confrontation of oppressive forces. I don't think anyone recognizes that what was presented at the ICJ is an iota of the reality in Gaza, a mere iota. And they had to emphasize the scale of slaughter against children as if because me as a woman is not enough being killed or a Palestinian man being killed is not enough, that you have to emphasize the children for people to be able to break the barrier of perception and see Palestinians as humans in order to be able to see the crimes that Israel is committing against them. Israel isn't being taken to court for a crime it committed. It is being taken to court so that they stop an ongoing crime that Israel refuses to stop. It was as if the entire court was happening in hindsight in retrospect, not in the urgency and sensitivity that it warrants that these practices are happening now. I think it's really important for people to mobilize and protect you know, the state of South Africa, the representatives, the lawyers, the legal teams that are working on this, the civilian archivers, um, the documenters, to truly protect them and empower them and again, to ensure that they are not attacked or assaulted because that's the history Israel has. I would like to recognize that the ICJ is setting a precedent in confronting an oppressive power, but it is not the defining borders or parameters 
that we must emphasize as available to us, that we must continue mobilizing in an arms embargo on Israel. That is our duty as citizens of the world to act as the executionary body of the ICJ. The work of South Africa is not limited to its legal team. It is not limited to its representative body. It is the work of the entire world. It is the relentless marching in the streets, in the snow, in the heat, um, in whatever weather, demanding a ceasefire, demanding an end to these atrocities. The ICJ would not have had the case that it did had it not been for the insistence of the world, whether on social media or mainstream media, or even in personal engagement and communication, that these testimonies, these images, these videos, these voices will be seen. And I think it's very important to recognize that, to celebrate that, and to continue that, not just for cases at the ICJ, but as part of our, our own role and breath as people of the world who are trying to ensure that we all have equitable and just lives, dignified lives, no matter where we are, um, no matter who we are, and to claim self-defense as you ethnically cleanse a people and drawing on the era of empire and colonialism is not something that we will tolerate.